Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are doing good today. Um, I actually got some sleep last night. Surprisingly enough, I haven't slept in like two days, but last night I finally crashed. So I feel a lot better. So I'm like, honey, let me go ahead and do this podcast, okay? If you guys do not know, Mr. Kevin Hart is trending once again on social media because he is speaking out. He's raging against cancel culture, which I find very interesting. If y'all do not know, if you're new here to Tea Time and Filter, you know what I'm saying? Welcome, welcome. Um, one of the very first podcasts I did, like the official podcast, not a YouTube MP3, I did this January 18th of 2020, and it was called We Need to Talk About the Toxicity of Cancel Culture. Had about 12,000 listens, so thank y'all <laughs> who uh, listened to the podcast and enjoyed it. And I kept it 100 in that podcast. It looks like Kevin Hardy is now doing a media interview where he too is calling out cancel culture. So if you guys do not know, Kevin Hart was trending um, all day yesterday. He was also responding back to people. Honey, when I tell you Kevin Hart was on some today I got time cuz type shit, he really was, okay? So this is what went down. Kevin Hart experienced cancel culture firsthand when controversial jokes from his past resurfaced ahead of his gig for hosting the 91st Academy Awards. The comedian exited the Oscars in the wake of the media blitz that surrounded his past jokes. It took a while for Kevin to issue a straightforward apology for his insensitive words. Now in a new interview with the Sunday Times, ahead of his Netflix debut called Fatherhood, Hart railed against cancel culture and says it has led to a loss of freedom in comedy because many comics feel censored by thinking that things you'll say will come back to bite you in the ass. If people want to pull up stuff and go back to the same tweets of old, go ahead. There's nothing I can do, Hart told the Sunday Times. You're looking at a younger version of myself, a comedian trying to be funny and at that attempt failing. Apologies were made and I understand now how it came off. I look back and I cringe, so it's growth. It's about growth. He continues, I personally don't give a shit about cancel culture. If somebody has done something truly damning, then absolutely a consequence should be attached. But when you're talking about someone said they need to be taken down, shut the fuck up. What are you talking about? When do we get to the point in life where we're supposed to be perfect, where people are supposed to operate perfectly all the time? I don't understand. I don't expect perfection from my kids. I don't expect it from my wife, friends, employees, because last I checked, the only way you grow up is from fucking up. I don't know a kid who hasn't fucked up or done some dumb shit. Speaking on his own cancellation, Hart said, it never bothered me. Whenever the controversial material resurfaced in present day context and led people to try and cancel him for it, if you allow it to have an effect on you, it will. Personally, that's not how I operate, the comedian said. I understand that people are humans and everyone can change. Hart also added, it's like jail. People get locked up so they can be taught a lesson. When they get out, they're supposed to be better. But if they come out and people go, I'm not giving you a job because you are in jail, then what the fuck did I go to jail for? That was my punishment. How do you not give these people a shot? They're saying that all life should be over because of a mistake. If your life should end, then there should be no opportunity to change. What are you talking about? Who are you to make that decision? Then they go on to say that fatherhood launches on June 18th, okay? Right in time for Father's Day. So, um, you know, this has caused some controversy. Some people took it as, oh, Kevin Hart, you're whack. You're not funny. You're just mad because nobody's watching your shows. So Kevin Hart was definitely clapping back at the people, honey. He wasn't here for none of the bullshit. So I'm going to read to you guys just some of the tweets that Kevin Hart was tweeting when responding back to some of these critics. So Kevin Hart says, I got time today. Interesting how everybody now has time on social media. Hmm. Today I got time, cuz. So then he goes on to say, the he's not funny slander is the best. This is for you. I have three stand-up comedy specials that fall in the top 10 highest grossing comedy specials of all time. Two of my specials are in the top three of all time. 
Then he says, I have been the highest grossing comedian in entertainment for years now. I have also been the highest grossing comedian in the box office with over $4 billion in earnings. I have also turned my comedic talents into a place of business and branding and radio and other revenue streams. The hate slash slander fuels me to do more. Then he says, you guys are what makes this business fun because it's not about getting to the top. It's about doing your best to stay on top after you get there. I rarely talk shit, but I felt the need to today. Stop believing these headlines and read the actual article. You guys fall for the banana in the tailpipe trick every time. Then he says this, J. Cole said it best. If you're laughing at a millionaire, the joke's on you. Now back to your regularly scheduled program, live, love, and laugh. So that is what Kevin Hart had to say to the folks who were coming at him and things like that. And I think he made some pretty good points, okay? Now, one of the points I did not agree with, I don't think that you can really compare him making homophobic tweets um, and being worth $200 million to somebody coming out of jail, um, being unemployed after paying a debt to society. I think those are kind of apples to oranges because at the end of the day, even if Kevin Hart is, is canceled, he has a comfortable $200 million to you know rest on. If he couldn't get another gig today, if nobody checked for him, if everything tanked tomorrow, Kevin Hart has created generational wealth for him and his family. Somebody who's done 10 years in prison for, let's say, armed robbery or, you know, murder, just whatever somebody went to prison for, it's a lot harder to compare their situation. I think that once somebody has done time and they paid their debt to society, they should be allowed to work and recontribute to society. But we know a lot of times that felony on your record will hold you back for many, many opportunities. You know, and I think that's a whole nother topic within itself. We all make mistakes, right? Nobody's perfect. It, you know, we all go through things. Sometimes we say and do things that we don't mean to. And so to cancel somebody, to destroy their livelihood because of it, I've never agreed with that. And you guys know how I feel about cancel culture. Like I stated in my original podcast, to me, cancel culture is not only toxic, but it's lazy. It's very, very lazy. It's a bunch of people who don't want to get to the root of the problem of why the individual said or did what they did. Because it's a lot harder to try and teach somebody. You know, nobody has time to teach you and help rectify a situation that you may have got yourself into. They'd rather just cancel you. It's easier to just tweet and say, F Kevin Hart, he's canceled. F Lovely T, she's canceled. Then to really get down to the crux of the matter, right? My situation was totally different from his, but with his, he let out a bunch of homophobic, you know, tweets. Back then, in the yesteryears of Twitter, that's how it was. It was a wild, wild west. People said anything and did anything. Now, I remember a few years ago, he was also blasted for disrespecting dark-skinned women, saying that dark-skinned women have fucked up credit, you know, you, you dark holes are broke. And I remember a lot of dark skinned women were really pissed off about that and were upset. And what did people tell dark skinned women? Oh, get over it. It's a joke. Y'all are too sensitive. And see, and that's my issue is that when it came to the homophobic tweets, oh, it was like he was canceled. He had to go on a whole ball apology tour. But when it came to him tearing down black women, it was get over it. He wasn't canceled. He, he didn't go on a hobo tour. It was just business as usual. And again, that's where, to me, cancel culture is also lazy. It depends on the offense, and it also depends on the person doing the offending, okay? Do I think it's okay for a grown man to let out those homophobic tweets that he lot years ago? Absolutely not. There's a lot of things said by people back then on social media. And my issue is when people go back digging for old shit. And then they put it in their pocket and then they pull it out years later once you've been successful to say, aha, this person is a bad person because of what they said six, seven, eight, nine years ago. I don't respect that. Trust and believe he had a huge following back then. People saw the tweets back then, retweeted and everything else. Why was there no uproar? 
And that's another issue with cancel culture to me is that now it's become the new form of wokeness. Now it's become chic and hip and cool to cancel people. And a lot of people always ask, well, how did we get here? And I believe the reason why we got here is because like I've always said, when you give people an inch, honey, they're never satisfied. They will run with that mile. So when you were allowed to cancel this person for said behavior, well, now let's go dig in and see who else we can cancel for said behavior. But what people need to understand is that when you're going around digging for dirt, when you're going around trying to point fingers at other people continuously, understand that there's always fingers pointing back at you. And you better hope that same grave that you're digging for somebody else is not the same grave that you yourself may fall into. OK, a perfect example of someone whose cancel culture karma has come back to bite them in the ass is Christy Teigen. How many cancel culture campaigns has she spearheaded on Twitter using her enormous platform? She got rid of so many people, anybody who didn't agree with her, anyone that she felt should not have a voice. She spearheaded campaigns to cancel them. Remember, when people were going after her about the whole Pizzagate thing. She cried tattooed tears, she played victim, and what happened? She got all those people canceled. And these were people who were verified, who had been on Twitter for years, who were calling her out. You know what I'm saying? She got them canceled only for her own cancel karma to come back on her. See, it was fun when she was digging through other people's old tweets. It was fun when she was pointing fingers and saying, hey, that person's mean to me. Look what they're saying to me. I'm being bullied. And then when her old tweets got discovered, Pizzagate aside, but the things that she was saying to Courtney Stodden, now she is also feeling that cancel culture backlash. So much so she's getting drug again by clothing designer Michael Costello. So Chrissy is a perfect example of that. Watch the fingers that you continuously point at others, especially when you're in the background doing dirt and threatening people and being just as nasty as the same people that you're accusing. So again, she is a perfect example of cancel culture karma coming back to roost. And I feel no ways about Chrissy because she loved to doll out punishment on social media towards others. And now that she's getting her own punishment, she can't stop apologizing and writing long ass Dear John letters. We're not trying to hear none of that mess, Chrissy. Enjoy the same grave that you were digging for other people, hon. So that's what people don't understand. Karma works both ways. And if you're doing something with a disingenuous spirit, it will definitely come back on you. Okay, can I get an amen? Am I preaching this morning? So we have to watch that. Now, I'm not saying that people shouldn't be canceled for certain things, but the offense needs to make sense. And then who is a person who's dolling out the punishment and how long is the punishment supposed to last? Because even with our children, Yo, what's up? Hey, T-Sippers. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.